welcome to the All Plan Quick Start Lesson 4. In this lesson, we will model the foundation and the second floor framing plans. Open your All Plan Quick Start project. Double click in the viewport to open the building structure. Make sure drawing file 3, called grid lines, is set to reference mode. Under foundation, check that drawing file 100 foundation plan start is set to active. Click close to confirm and return to the model. It's good practice to always check that you are modeling on the correct active file. The title bar should say DF100. To quickly model our building, we will be using a wizard. This is unique to Allplan and allows you to store elements and quickly use them in any project. If you haven't done so already, make sure to unzip the wizard's file from the downloaded Quick Start data. In the wizard's palette, right click on the drop down menu and choose Add Group. Browse to where you save the Quick Start Wizard. Normally, to start a drawing, you would select from an element component in the ribbon, for example, a wall. You would then go into the wall properties and set up the properties of your wall before modeling. Then you would model your wall. To exit a command, click Escape on your keyboard. At any time, you can undo from the Quick Access toolbar at the top of the screen. A wizard allows you to save these settings and work directly off the predefined information. Wizards are easy to create. These can be generic elements you use often or specific project types. For example, you can create wizards for schools, box stores, or infrastructure projects. Wizards allow you to reuse elements, saving time and reducing duplication of work. Anything from a single element to entire assemblies can be saved in a wizard, even an entire floor plan. They also allow you to standardize within your company so everyone's models look the same. The wizard palette works just like the modeling window. You can zoom and pan using the scroll wheel and buttons on your mouse. To use any element in the wizard, simply double right click on the element. Be careful to click on the part that you want to model. For example, here I can click on the opening or the wall. Let's start by modeling the strip footings under the exterior walls. In the wizard, double right click on the element labeled Exterior Strip Footing. This will start the model command for that element and all properties stored for that element will be set. You can review the properties and make changes if needed, or start modeling using the predefined properties. Notice that the strip footing has a curb as part of the profile. I'm designating the model reference point at 1 foot 1 inch from the edge of the footing. When modeling, you can graphically see how this reference line works in relation to the physical element. You can now click anywhere in the model space and start drawing. You can also use extension lines and snap points to make modeling easier. Notice the reference line we discussed in the properties. For this project, we want to make sure that the shorter side, the 1 foot 1 inch reference, is on the outside face. In the command prompt for the wall, click reverse to change the reference edge of this wall. Notice the command bar at the bottom of the screen. This is an important command line that will tell you what all plan requires for the given command. We can also use this command to directly type in a length or a distance for whatever it is that we're modeling. For this project, I'm going to snap to the grid lines and place the strip footings around the perimeter of the building. At this point, we may want to see what we're modeling in 3D. You can open multiple viewports at any time to help visualize the model. In the Quick Access toolbar, click on the Window command. There are several options for viewing windows. Click on the 2 plus 1 animation window. We can now see the original plan view, an elevation view, and a 3D animation view. These are all live views and any work we do in one window will be displayed in all windows. At the bottom of the animation window, click on the Rotation command. Hold down the left mouse button to rotate the model. You can still zoom and pan with the scroll wheel on the mouse. You can easily change the position of these windows, making them larger or smaller, or moving their location. You can also undock the windows and move them anywhere on the screen, including onto another monitor. To do this, you must first disconnect the viewports. In the Quick Action toolbar, go to the Window drop-down menu and click on the Connected command. 
Now you can grab any window by holding down the left mouse button and move it to a new location. If you have multiple monitors, you can have the main all plan screen on one monitor and any number of viewports on another monitor. Click on Connected again to get the viewports back onto the main screen. Once you've completed modeling the perimeter strip footings, click Escape to exit the command. Notice that all plan automatically joins the walls at the corners. Repeat this process for the interior strip footings. In the wizard, double right click on interior strip footing. Draw the footings along grid lines 3.8 and C.6. Press escape once to stop modeling at the end of the last wall. We are still in this command and we can now click on a new location and continue modeling the walls along grids 4.7 and 8.5. Next, we can model the spread footings that will go under our columns. In the wizard, double right click on the 6x6 spread footing. Snap to the grid intersections along grid line C at 2, 3, and 4. Press escape to exit the command. Finally, we need to model the slab on grade. Again, in the wizard, double right click on the 12 inch slab on grade element. If you notice in the 3D view, we have the curb that starts 1 foot 1 inch from the interior edge of the strip footing. We want our slab to be flush with the interior face of this wall. We can do this very easily in all plan by adding an offset for modeling the slab. This would be the same procedure if we need to add a slab overhang and an elevated slab. In the command prompt at the bottom of the screen, type negative 1 foot 1 inch to define the overhang going outside the face of the slab. Now we can snap to the corners of the strip footing. The slab will be drawn 1 foot 1 inch over this line. The yellow line represents where I'm snapping to and the black line is what will be modeled. Press escape at the last corner before completing the polygon. Now in the 3D animation view, you can see that the slab on grade is flush with the foundation wall. We've completed the foundation plan and we're ready to move on to the second floor framing plan. Double click in an empty portion of the viewport to open the building structure. In this case, it will be helpful to keep the foundation plan visible and editable in the background. Change drawing file 100 to edit mode. Now set drawing file 200 second floor plan start to active. You may need to check on this checkbox on the second floor story to activate. Click close to exit. It's always good practice to verify that you're on the correct drawing file by reviewing the top of the title bar. Also notice that we can still see and edit the foundation plan. However, anything that we model will now be on the second floor framing plan. Let's start by modeling the perimeter walls. In the wizard, double right click on exterior stud wall with brick. Follow the same steps as we used for the exterior strip footing, starting at a corner. Click on the corners to model the walls. Notice the direction the walls are being modeled, that is, what direction the internal and external layers are drawn in. Click on the reverse command if needed to model the brick at the outside face. Once done, press escape to exit the command. Next, model the interior walls. Double right click on interior 8 inch concrete wall in the wizard. Draw the walls from the inside face of the exterior walls following the grid lines. Next, we can model the three internal columns. Double right click on the column in the wizard. Click on the intersecting grid lines to model the columns. For the column at C4, we want to change the orientation. In this dialog box, we can input what angle the column will be rotated. Then, in the rotation box in the command prompt at the bottom of the screen, we can indicate to rotate the column. If you hover over this box, a tip will tell you what to input in order to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise and by how much. With the angle set to 90, type in the plus sign in the command line text box. Now you can see that the column is rotated 90 degrees. Press escape to exit the command. We can now confirm what's been drawn in the 3D animation view. Notice the wall and column heights are accurately taken from the plan model that was predefined in the building structure. Next, let's model the beams the same way that we've seen. Double right click on the beam element in the wizard. Now click on the model where you want to model the beams. They will span along grid line 3 from wall to wall. 
and along grid line C from column C3 to the exterior wall. Notice in the 3D animation view the beams are automatically aligned at the correct elevation, again pulling the data from the story planes. This follows the basic philosophy of all plan and that we are truly a 2D to 3D workflow. The last element we'll add is the elevated floor slab. This is the same approach as we used for the slab on grade. This time in the wizard, double right click on the 10 inch floor slab element. Make sure the offset is now set to zero. Draw the slab around the perimeter of the floor plan, snapping to the interior corner of the walls. We've now completed the foundation and second floor plan for our building. As more elements are drawn, it can be useful to turn different elements on and off quickly. All plan has a useful object palette which allows you to quickly control the visibility of different information on the model. You can filter by element types. Clicking on the eye icon will turn off the visibility of that item. For example, on the second floor, we can turn off the slab to better visualize the beams and columns. You can also turn off specific elements by expanding the category and clicking on the icon for that element. Notice that there are several categories for filtering visibility. These include by drawing files, by layers, by material, by construction type, or by attribute. These last three are user-defined inputs that allow you to further manage your model. That brings us to the end of lesson four of the All Plan Quick Start Guide. In the next lesson, we will add openings to the second floor walls and complete the roof framing plan.